I'm going to share four business skills that most working music producers learn way too late and tell me that if they had taken these more seriously at the start, they would be way farther ahead. The first skill helps ensure that you won't go broke now. The second skill helps ensure you won't ever go broke in the future. The third skill will give you a ridiculous competitive edge. And the fourth skill will make building your career way less complicated and overwhelming. I'm Daniel Grimmett. Welcome to the channel. I advise and manage producer songwriters. That's been my day job for a while now. And I make these videos to share everything that I've learned about that with you. So let's get into it. Every once in a while, I will come across a video where a producer is being open and honest about their financial struggles as a working professional in this industry. And typically I'll send them a DM and see if they're willing to have a conversation just for my own research. And this actually happened a few weeks ago. Great producer who had a video go kind of viral talking about this stuff. So I got on a call with him and he said something that I hear a lot of producers say. He told me that he just doesn't like talking about money with artists and other creatives he's working with. And fair enough. Ideally, you would have a manager that handles all of the money talk and you just focus on the music. But it's a catch-22 because in order to attract a great manager, not every time, but many times, you already have to be generating enough income to make it worth their while. And this producer actually had a manager already, but didn't want them to touch all of his freelance work because they get 20% of anything they touch and he can't afford that right now. So we came to the conclusion that the skill he needs to develop right now is the ability to comfortably talk about money without making it awkward for himself or the people he's working with. I'll link a video in the description below that gives you a tactic for doing this. But the point I made to this producer was that we can't complain about getting screwed over financially while also not being willing to talk about money. The people willing to openly talk about money in this industry are the ones who keep most of it, which is why a lot of the money still goes to those at the top. You wouldn't move to Mexico and make the decision to never learn Spanish and then complain about not understanding what anyone around you is saying. That would be a silly thing to do. So skill number one is learning to be comfortable talking about money. And knowing what to do with that money is skill number two. So what if I told you that almost any music producer can retire a millionaire, even if they never have a big hit or even make six figures a year? I want to show you something that is super basic, yet 90% of producers I talk to, both old and young, don't do this. And it's something I wish I started earlier myself. So let's say you're 25 years old right now and you plan on retiring when you're 67, which is the average here in the US. And let's assume that you don't have any money invested yet. However, starting today, you just set $150 per month aside into a basic retirement account and you make a habit of doing that every month. This is similar to something that would be set up for you at a regular day job. Historically, the 30 year return of the US market has been between 10% and 12%. So we'll just put 10 and voila, you can retire with a million dollars in the bank. There is no retirement plan in the music business. You have to save for this yourself. Ideally, it would be even more than a million dollars because as you earn more with age, you can invest more. For example, if you contributed twice the amount for the same time frame, then you'd have $2.3 million. Again, this is all normal adult stuff, but most producers I talk to ignore doing this and they deeply regret it later. And don't make the mistake of thinking that if you can invest that full amount, then you invest nothing at all. Invest whatever you're able to. Compound interest is very powerful. This isn't financial advice. I'm not licensed for that. So talk to someone who is. This is just a basic skill I see many of my clients and peers lack. And so did I until someone showed me this stuff. And there's another thing I found surprising about producers coming up right now. And I think it has to do with all of these production and mixing tutorials that you're watching here on YouTube. So let's take a poll real quick. How many of you watching this video in 2024 think that what you sell as a music producer is your technical ability to produce a song? 
If yes, raise your right hand. If no, raise your left hand. Okay, so I meet a lot of producers who have either been producing for a long time, but not professionally, or younger producers that just graduated from some kind of music production school or took a course. And now they want to make a living getting paid to produce and write songs. And they think that because they have the technical skills to produce music that they deserve to be paid for it. And music schools and courses push this narrative. But the problem is that this isn't a data entry job. It's art. And the technical ability to make a song happen out of thin air is constantly being commoditized by education, tools and technology, access to cheap instrumentals, AI, all that stuff. And I'm not saying any of that is bad. What I'm saying is that the skill you probably want to prioritize once you understand the basics of production is your ability to develop taste. So what is taste? Well, speaking of AI, I asked it to define taste because it's actually hard to explain, even being in this business for so long. I just know when someone has it or doesn't. But here's how ChatGPT defines taste. Taste, in the context of creativity, refers to the ability to judge the aesthetic and artistic value of work. It encompasses an appreciation for beauty, craftsmanship, innovation, and emotional resonance. Taste is subjective, shaped by personal preferences, experiences, cultural background, and education. It signifies not only what one likes, but also the quality and depth of one's engagement with creative work. Taste can be seen as both the ability to recognize excellence and the personal preferences that guide one's own creative output. In essence, developing taste is about expanding your exposure, deepening your understanding, and honing your critical faculties, all while engaging in continuous creation and reflection. It's a lifelong process that evolves as you grow as an individual and creative. It's a very chat GPT definition, but there you go. More practically, the best way I've found to develop taste is to get around other people that have great taste. This is why I notice a massive difference between producers who only took a production course or school versus those who have spent a ton of time intimately in sessions with other music creatives who truly have great taste. When we develop a newer producer here at Dark Label, we put a lot of effort into replicating that experience by ensuring that they spend a lot of time around others who have great taste. However, unfortunately, there will be a large portion of producers that despite having the technical ability to produce songs, they just never really develop a taste that enough people care to listen to or want on their projects. That's just a reality. And just a quick reminder, if you get value from content like this but want a deeper dive, then we do have a podcast that goes more in depth called Music Pro Daily, and we send out our newsletter, The Producer Files, about every two weeks, and it contains multiple articles that we typically don't do videos on. It's more of a business or industry digest. Links for both of those are below in the description, as well as links to what we do here at Dark Label, if you're curious. Okay, skill number four. So let's say you love to travel, and you wanna go explore the giant and beautiful state of California. Specifically, you wanna go see San Francisco up north, Los Angeles down south, and San Diego all the way at the bottom. What you probably would do is start on one end of the state and drive in a straight line, hitting all three cities in a row, one after the other. What you probably wouldn't do, because it's physically impossible, is drive to all three cities at the exact same time. There's no way to do that unless you're an alien or a witch or something. However, this is exactly what most producers try to do with their business and then wonder why everything seems complicated and overwhelming. I would be pretty overwhelmed if someone said I had to figure out a way to drive to three different cities hours apart from each other all at the exact same time. I probably wouldn't even get into my car in the first place because I'd be too confused on where to even start. So What's the point here? The point is that many producers want to do everything at once because they hear that diversification is a smart business strategy. But what I've found is that 90% of the time they are trying a bunch of different stuff because they're actually just fearful that nothing is going to work for them. It's not a strategy thing. It's a fear thing. 
if you've already built something relatively successful and you want to leverage that to build something else, then cool. That's diversification. But if you haven't done that yet, then the skill that you may want to prioritize as soon as possible is focus. And I know that some of you are going to hate me for saying that because it's cliche, but I don't care. And I'll keep telling you to focus until you actually do it. And similar to skill number three, better than a lot of the productivity hacks out there for focus, I just recommend getting around other people that are focused too. So you can actually see the benefits of it, not just the theory behind it. And if you want to, you can start doing that right now by watching this playlist of real producers who were just like you, sharing what they did to reach the goals that you want to reach too. Thanks for watching.